An alarming number of frogs and other amphibians are in danger of becoming extinct. Many scientists, including Tyrone Hayes, a biologist at UC Berkeley, are asking why. Some scientists speculate that a fungal disease is a cause. Others suggest increased exposure to ultraviolet radiation. Still others cite climate change. Tyrone Hayes hypothesizes that exposure to agricultural chemicals could be a cause. Hayes knew that the weed killer atrazine is the most widely used chemical herbicide in the U.S. and probably the world. More than 70 million pounds of atrazine are applied to farmland in the United States every year, with the highest use shown in red in the corn-growing regions of the Midwest. Hayes also knew that atrazine is mostly applied in the spring when amphibians are breeding. Atrazine is a common contaminant in the waters in which amphibians live as they develop into adults. A few experiments from Hayes' laboratory will highlight a scientist's most powerful tool, the scientific method. The first step is to make observations. In this case, Hayes notes that amphibians are in decline and that atrazine is a common contaminant in waters in which amphibians live. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency approves atrazine's use as long as environmental levels do not exceed 30 to 40 parts per billion. Studies had shown that such levels of atrazine do not kill frogs directly. But what if something less obvious occurs? Studies also indicated that atrazine could act as an endocrine disruptor in other animals. Could atrazine affect the reproductive system of frogs? This question represents the second key step of the scientific method. In answer to the question, the investigator forms a tentative proposition called a hypothesis. One possible hypothesis can be stated this way. At dosage levels found commonly in the environment, atrazine interferes with the development of the reproductive system of frogs. If correct, you can imagine the disastrous effect on frog populations. Based on his hypothesis, Tyrone Hayes made a prediction, which is the next step in the scientific method. He predicted that tadpoles exposed to environmentally relevant levels of atrazine would show adverse effects on the reproductive system once they reached adulthood. In the scientific method, a prediction is tested by a well-designed experiment. The most informative experiments are those that have the ability to show that the prediction is wrong. If the prediction is wrong, the hypothesis must be questioned, modified, or rejected. Good experiments, therefore, have the potential to falsify hypotheses. Hayes and his associates established tanks in which all attributes were held constant except the water's atrazine concentrations, 0.1 parts per billion atrazine, 25 parts per billion atrazine, and no atrazine. Each condition was replicated in three tanks, for a total of nine tanks. This experimental setup is a controlled experiment. It employs samples that are as similar as possible, with the exception of a single variable. In this case, atrazine. Atrazine is considered the independent variable, and the measured response from the frogs will be the dependent variable. The unmanipulated set, with no atrazine added, is the control group in this experiment, and the others are the experimental groups. The investigators placed 30 tadpoles of the northern leopard frog from laboratory reared eggs into each of the nine tanks. The tadpoles grew, and when they transitioned into adults, they were sacrificed to evaluate their reproductive tissues. The investigators found abnormalities in the reproductive systems of some of the male frogs. The abnormalities were of two sorts. First, some testes were abnormally small with retarded development compared to normal-sized testes. Second, in a kind of sex reversal, some testes actually contained eggs or oocytes. Under these controlled conditions, 36% of the frogs from the lowest atrazine treatment and 12% of the frogs from the highest treatment showed an abnormal testes development called gonadal dysgenesis. A single frog from the control group showed gonadal dysgenesis. Similarly, 29% and 8% of the treated frogs but none of the control frogs had oocytes in their testes. 
Are the differences between the experimental groups and control group different from what you might expect from random variation? Statistical tests help to evaluate the significance of the results. From his analysis, Hayes concluded that exposure to atrazine at concentrations as low as 0.1 parts per billion was significant and had a dramatic effect on tadpole development. It feminized the males. Thus, the results support his hypothesis. Now Hayes can ask new questions. His experiments were performed in the laboratory with a species of frog bred for laboratory use. Would his results be the same in nature? To find out,